experience action like you've never heard it before action sports celebrities badasses and massive interviews all coming to you from the polaris razor studio this is jim beaver's project action exclusively on podcast one welcome to this week's project action coming at you from the polaris razor studios on the podcast one network i'm your host jim beaver just like i have been for the past uh year year plus i don't know we're almost 60 episodes into this thing so if you're tuning in by now you know who the hell i am but uh man it's uh it's definitely gonna be a fun one this week we got uh, actor alex russell he is uh he is on the show talking about uh, the new TV show SWAT. If you're tuning in today on Thursday, debuts tonight. Uh, if you're tuning in after the facts already aired, hopefully you set the DVR for that one, but definitely one you want to get uh, uh, dialed in for uh, the next couple of weeks because uh, i got to tell you, this new show, uh, seeing the trailers and the previews and the teasers, uh, it's going to be one of the hottest uh, properties on uh, fall TV. But uh, Alex Russell with SWAT. Uh, I mean, here's an actor who's been in a ton of feature films by now and uh, things like that. But uh, uh, always fun catching up with some actors, especially ones that uh, uh, get to play in some badass action-type uh, TV shows and movies. So Alex Russell on tap today. Uh, thank you guys for joining me here uh, on Project Action. Thanks to all of you who uh, continue to go to iTunes and subscribe to this podcast as well as uh, rate and review us. As always, if you leave a rating or review, they do mean something. They mean a lot, actually, to uh, the iTunes algorithm. And, uh, man, I got that word right, algorithm. I usually call it a logarithm. I don't know. Is it a logarithm, algorithm, one of the two, whatever that A word is, Um <laughs> You know, whatever you guys do, if you can, uh, you know, subscribe, but then leave a rating or review. If you leave a review and uh, leave your Twitter, Instagram, at username in the body of the review, um, my promise to you is that I will follow you back, and um, I will, most definitely. Uh, but uh, right now, i got to tell you, it's a packed week. I just got back from uh, Camp Razor at Glamis, uh, out shredding some razors in the dunes. Uh, turn around, had the Off-Road Hall of Fame awards ceremony uh, this past Monday there in uh, – in Vegas, uh, it's the kickoff to SEMA week. I uh, was a, a host there, did some radio, so we'll make sure and uh, check out the Down and Dirty Radio Show feed, my other show, my nationally syndicated show. It's also available here on Podcast One and iTunes. Uh, subscribe to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we did some stuff there with my good friend Sarah Price. Um, and uh, just an amazing event. It's kind of the kickoff to SEMA week. And then, uh, you know, it, it, by the time you're listening to this, let's put it this way. I'm at SEMA, and uh, I am knee-deep in uh, meetings, signings, rad cars, and all things the automotive industry. So uh, uh, we're keeping this one a bit short this week. Obviously, uh, it, it's all... <laughs> It's all about the quality, not the quantity. But uh, we got about a 30-minute interview with Alex Russell. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, I am at SEMA. Uh, we're going to be back to regular schedule next week. But uh, next week I do have an amazing guest on tap, um, a fellow Podcast One host, somebody I've followed her career for a very long time, uh, Lillian Garcia. Uh, she's got a new podcast on Podcast One called Chasing Glory. But uh, – uh, I got to tell you, Lillian, just an amazing, uh, amazing human. I mean, she's, uh, you know, been one of the faces of WWE wrestling for a long time, uh, professional singer. Um, she's just, she's got an awesome story. I'm looking forward to ca catching up with Lillian on this podcast and uh, being able to tell her story. And uh, uh, I think it's going to be a ton of fun. This one I'm definitely looking forward to. That's coming up next week. Uh, we got, uh, I, I think we got a podcast from my good friends at Car Throttle from the UK. Uh, I'm actually doing that uh, this week um, out there at the SEMA show. Uh, so that should be coming sometime soon in the next couple of weeks. So we got some fun stuff lined up, um, you know, here on Project Action as well as my other show, the Down and Dirty Radio Show. So uh, definitely won't leave you guys disappointed, that's for sure. But uh, uh, like I said, we've got uh, that interview with Alex Russell coming up. Um, before we get to that, though, uh, we're going to go uncut in this interview. Um, so uh, we've got to get to a couple of our amazing partners here on Project Action. A number one, been with us through since day number one, uh, is our good friends there at True Car. And uh, this is a service that I use. I'm a car guy, right? I'm a race car driver. I drive cars for a living. I love cars. I am definitely uh, a car person. Uh, you know, and when I'm looking for a car, a uh, new Subaru most of the time, uh, you know what? I, uh, I use my friends at True Car. You know, and there's something about TrueCar that a lot of people don't know. 
The true car can also help you find a used car. That's right, not just new stuff, pre-owned as well. In fact, there's over 700,000 pre-owned vehicles available from true car certified dealers across the country. Whether you're looking to buy new or used, you can get upfront pricing and information that empowers discounts off the list price for used cars and a better buying experience through our true car certified dealer network. And you know what? There's over 700,000 pre-owned vehicles available from True Car Certified Dealers Nationwide right now. And you know what? You'll see what other people in your area paid for the car you want, and you'll know what price is fair. You'll feel confident when you buy your car knowing that you're getting the best deal. Um, but uh, you know what? Uh, you know, it's really easy. With True Car, you connect with a local certified dealer of your choosing, and you'll enjoy a quick, easy buying experience. Using True Car, you'll easily find the new or used car that you want. And you know what? There's been over 3 million. That's a three with six zeros behind it. Three million cars have been sold to True Car users by the True Car Certified Dealer Network. And you know what? That network. It's 13,000 True Car certified dealers nationwide. Pretty easy to find a True Car dealer. So when you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Some features aren't available in all states. And you know what? I save money with True Car. Absolutely do. Um, but you know, there's another place that I save money too. And uh, that's my friends at Geico. You know, and everybody's got a to-do list. Me, I start out the day, and I got like 15, 20 things on this list of things that I got to do, right? Sometimes it's do an interview with amazing guests like Alex Russell. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, uh, um, you know, doing paperwork, you know, stuff for uh, taxes, um, you know, things with running a business, right? You know, the, sometimes it's pick up my daughter. Or sometimes it's uh, pick up the dry cleaning, uh, go to the grocery store. Um, lots of things, right? Go to the bank. But you know what? There's one thing that we all fail at, right? It's let's add save hundreds of dollars on car insurance, and we need to add that to our to-do list. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up or go anywhere. All you have to do is you do have to go to Geico.com. And in 15 minutes, 15 minutes, really? That's all it takes? You could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. Extra money in your pocket? I tell you what, I like that. It may just be the most rewarding thing that you do today. Thank you, Geico.com, for your support of Project Action here on the Podcast One Network from the Polaris Razor Studios. And uh, you know what? We got a little uh, a little sound bite here from our friends at Podcast One, and we're getting to this interview with Alex Russell. Hey, it's Jay Moore, and it is time, finally, for America's Lakers podcast. That's right, I'm going to be hosting America's Lakers podcast. My man, Aaron Larsoul, an analytical genius, he's going to bring to the table what I can't every Wednesday. America's Lakers podcast exclusively at podcastone.com, the podcastone.com app, which I highly recommend. You can rate and review this podcast on all Apple products. And guess what we're not going to do? We're not going to bathe in the gossip and the gratuitous negativity that's been swallowing Los Angeles whole lately. Who did what? Who snitched? Who said what? How about truth? How about facts? How about statistics? How about rotations? What's Luke Walton thinking? Who's underperforming? Who's overachieving? Who's rewarded? Who's coming? Who's going? And what are we going to do with all that delightful, delicious cap space? America's Lakers podcast with me, Jay Moore, and my man, my brother, Aaron Larsoul. Every Wednesday, podcastone.com. I'd like to welcome my guest, guest this week to uh, Project Action, actor Alex Russell. How's everything going, my friend? Everything's going great, man. Uh, aside from this uh, unexpected heat wave, I'm, I, couldn't, I couldn't complain. You know, it's funny. Uh, I'm in Arizona today. And uh, we're always hot, right? But uh, I happen to do a bit of TV here and there. And I was in uh, Beverly Hills yesterday and then in Studio City. And I couldn't believe how ridiculously hot it was for this type of time of year. I was just like, man, you guys are getting a heck of a heat I wave mean, over there. Yeah. It's Halloween. Like, it's Halloween next Tuesday or whatever. This weekend is Halloween weekend. Yeah. And it's just boiling. Yeah. If you're like me, it's like. October rolls around, the board shorts get put away, and then it's like, all right, I'm time. It's time for the hoodie, and I and I haven't been able to pull the hoodie out yet. And it's kind of bothering me, man. <laughs> oh, me too, me too. But, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. It, it's not it's not too bad. It's just right now we're we're working and shooting and stuff, so everyone's you know running around. We're trying to get scenes, and we're just working out in the open, so everyone's getting the farmer's tan and uh, yeah. But whatever, there are worse things. 
Yeah. Well, and speaking of working, you, I got to say, you have been busy. I mean, we're going to talk about SWAT here uh, here shortly because that's a big one. But, I mean, just in the past, what, week, you've had two movies hit theaters. I mean, that's uh, that's a pretty big statement right there, two movies hitting theaters on the same day, I think. They were, yeah. They, they ended up falling on the same day, uh, which, which was really, really cool and, and uh, a novelty for me. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's nice. Cause last year, you know, I, I was working really, really hard and, you know, it was so much fun, but I, I did like three location movies back to back. So I was away from LA and, and apart from my girlfriend for like, you know, many, many months of the year and we would fly and see each other and, you know, whatnot would do our best, but you know, it's still really tough, you know? And, and, uh, it's definitely uh, a lot of work, so it was sort of cool for for them to come out at the same time. You know, I got to, you know, sort of you got to reap the benefits of the of the hard work. Yeah. Well, here's a question about uh, the movie Only the Brave. I know that just came out, and uh, this is just a uh, how was it working on that film? Because uh, in a in a weird coincidence, uh, my sister's best friend, a girl that I know really well, her husband was Travis Turbyfield, that was one of the firefighters that passed away. I mean, it's an emotional movie. Oh. Yeah, it's an emotional movie. I mean, how was that, you guys stepping into these roles? Because, you know, it's not just you're playing a part, but you're actually, I mean, this is very new and very recent, you know? So, I'm sorry, can I repeat that? You said, can you repeat that? You said your your sister's best friend is Travis, Travis Turbifield's wife? Yes, yes, exactly. Wow, that's, that's yeah, small, small world. Yeah. I mean, right there, that just kind of goes to show... The fact that you say that, like, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny to me that when you have so many people that you could t- tell this story to who would have a similar response to you, like either they know a, a hot shot or a wildland firefighter or they know someone who knows someone. Um, and then you look at, at a movie like this being made and, you know, the last time a movie was made about wildland firefighters, not structure firefighters, but wildland guys was you know, in the earlier part of the century or something, certainly in our sort of more modern cinema, we haven't seen their story told. And and it's, you know, it, it's kind of long overdue to, to honor these guys and to show what badasses they are, uh, especially when you see just how important they are to society and how much we lean on them. Uh, you know, it's funny to me that, that you happen to have that connection, you know, uh, uh, funny as in it, it perfectly exemplifies um, just how connected we are to these guys and, and, and what an important part and prominent part of society they are. Yeah, well, and, and you know, for you as an actor, no, and I and I totally understand when you said funny where you were coming at, you know, and I don't I don't want the audience to to ever think that you know what I mean. You meant something else because I'm glad you clarified that. I knew exactly where you're coming from, but like you as an actor, I mean, that's that's got to be a different, uh, you know, a different when you're acting in a role like that versus SWAT, where it's it's kind of a fictional a fictional character, right? This you're actually representing somebody. I mean, that's got to be a little bit different take for you as an actor, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is definitely, you know, a huge responsibility there. Um, I actually started last year off uh, playing another guy who, who's, a, a, who's a real guy, Kevin Gale, in uh, the other movie that you mentioned that came out, Jungle. Yeah. And that was a situation where I was playing someone, you know, playing a real person. And that alone has its own, um, you know, its own set of responsibilities. Uh, but that gentleman, who who is an American hero as well, he's still alive. And then it was a whole new uh, thing and a whole new set of responsibilities to p- play someone that's passed away. Yeah. Um, so I played Andrew Ashcroft, who was just the most wonderful guy. Uh, literally, the, the main note for him is you should be smiling all the time. <laughs> um, we all, all of us got, got, got to know uh, the, the families. Um, got to connect with the families. The families were incredibly um, generous of spirit and time and supportive of us. Um, and and it, it was something beyond a movie. It was unlike anything I've ever done in my life. And I, I just felt humbled and, and honored to get to represent him in the best way that I could. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cool. And uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, you know, Jungle, that movie came out and Man, I'm just looking at your list here recently, you know, and, and 
you are staying really busy. I mean, rolling into SWAT. I mean, this is this has got to be a big deal. You've done a lot of film, right? right. But this is your first big TV production. I mean, how, how was that? You know, that's got to feel really good. I mean, I know as an actor, I mean, it, it's usually job to job to job. But then you see something like SWAT come along and you and you sign that and it's, you know, and, and you know, it, it's kind of open ended. Right. You could have a job for the next five, ten years, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we don't know, and and uh, you know, I think that uh, as we as we sort of said when we were waiting to find out if the pilot was going to get picked up to series, we would all say, and I would say, well, I'm cautiously optimistic because every sign that I see in front of me says this is something that is special. We're also lucky to be a part of this because we've hit something that's really special here that that is firing on all cylinders. But you, based on the, you know, how we are conditioned from our experience as actors in this industry coming up, there's always that level of caution there so that you protect your own soul and, and your end happiness. Uh, so I, I say the same thing now. I, I agree with you. To be honest with you, whilst I am, uh, you know, respectful to the universe and we're not going to get arrogant or overly confident about it, if I looked at it from an outsider's perspective and I try to be as objective as I can and I look at the stuff that we're shooting and the car chase scenes that we have and the humanity that's there and the authenticity to SWAT that's there, I I feel like this thing could go for a long, long time and, and, and be entertaining people for quite a while. So uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, and, and I agree. I mean, just looking, you know, at the at the trailer, you know, that's out there and, you know, three, four minutes long on YouTube. And I watched that, you know, earlier today before this interview again, you know, but it, there, there's so many different things. Like you said, there's the action, but there's the social issues that are coming into play with, uh, you know, the way the trailer looks. And, you know, there's so many different things. And I'm like, man, you guys can draw an audience from so many different areas with this show. And I mean, that's it's almost the perfect storm, right? Yeah. And that, you know, that was one of the things that drew me in, in a big way initially, like it was one thing to have uh, a pilot that was exciting and, and action packed and, you know, funny and, and, you know, good dramatic scenes and ticking all the boxes that you look for. But as, as you said, when you sign on, you know, I, I love films and I love having, I've always loved having variety and getting to go from role to role and, and changing it up. So to do, uh, you know, a TV show where you could be locked into 22 episodes a year for however many years, it needs to really, really be something that grabs you on another level in order to, because it's such a big commitment. And I remember on one hand, yes, I, you know, I love the action and I, I love the drama and I love the entertainment value. But then the fact that it dealt with the community versus cops mentality the fact that um it didn't feel like it was reaching or, or or stretching or trying to be political it just happened to be something that was current and something that was worth saying now and worth bringing up for people to talk about now and the fact that it did it through the medium of an entertaining show that felt like something that was fresh and exciting to me and as we've continued the episodes that has continued, not that theme specifically, although I'm sure it will continue to come up in a recurring fashion, but just dealing with the notion of Islamic profiling, the black community versus, you know, cops mentality, um, or, or, or women in the workplace and how, they're, and how they're treated, all of these important issues are dealt with, but not because they're scrambling to try and be current, but because that's what these people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what they have to deal with, along with the bullets flying past their head. Yeah, and you know, and I think that's that's really what grabbed me from the trailer. And I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. I know, like, you know, my wife and I, we always, you know, you start getting magazines in the summertime, you know, on all the fall shows coming out. And her and I, you know, I, I have to stay current one for my job, but two, just because I I like you know, I like good cinema and good TV. And this was one of those shows we both looked, we're like, all right, that's when we're setting the DVR for, because this looks really, really good. And, uh, you know, and I, I think, you know, there's so many different reasons for it, but I, I'm excited for this thing to drop. You know, it, it's, uh, it's one I've definitely had earmarked for sure. 
but uh, I kind of want to go. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited thank for you. it. But um, I kind of want to go back. We'll talk more about SWAT, you know, before we wrap things up. But um, I want to talk about your upbringing in Australia. I mean, how was that to transition as an actor from Australia to the United States? Because, I mean, I know all these, you know, every country has kind of their own, um, you know, you hear about films in India and, you know, and there's stuff in Europe and, and Canada has their own TV and things like that in Australia. But, you know, as far as Hollywood goes, I mean, Hollywood is Hollywood. I mean, how, how is that transition? How did you get from Australia to the United States to where you're at now? Because that's got to be a big move. Yeah, it is a big move. And, and it was always the goal. Um, my goal was always to be involved in, you know, I, I, in the best uh you know movies and television that were available i just wanted to be a part of it you know i grew up loving movies loving cinema it was my favorite thing to do was to go and watch a movie it's still my favorite thing to do and hollywood is the epicenter of the western world's entertainment so why wouldn't you try and come here and be be a part of it uh definitely difficult definitely a difficult thing as many people will tell you um, you know, there's, there's a lot of hard work and, and, and admittedly a degree of luck that's involved being in the right place at the right time, having the right project. Um, so I, I, you know, as it is with, with all aspects of the industry and one of the ways you curb the, how much the, the, the luck counts is persistence over time I've found, but basically, you know, my agent, uh, in Australia, I had a good connection with some agencies in the United States. I finished drama school at the end of 2008, so I made my first, I started putting down self-tapes and stuff uh, for a manager who wanted to like check out my work based on a recommendation from a casting director in Australia, and long, boring story short, basically that led to people having interest in me, and also because I'd shot uh, an independent film in Australia that people were interested in. So I came over and took meetings mid-2009, actually, and... Um, I'm still with the same agency, and uh, and from from there we we started trying to get me a job, and then you've got the task of coming over to the United States for three month periods, taking meetings, doing auditions and stuff, and you're up against all these other actors, all these American actors, actors from all over the world. But if you don't have a visa, then after three months you go home, so you have a small window where you can try and do it. Uh, and that was interesting. So the basic goal is get a job where they can sponsor your O-1 visa, and then you've got your start. And then it just went from there. Over the years, I got O-1 visas, had several going concurrently with different jobs. And then a couple of years ago, I think, or beginning of last year or something, I got my green card. <laughs> nice. Now you can come and go as you please, I guess. That's always a good feeling, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, after I've lived here for like six years, you know, full time, but now I have a green card and it, it, it's just the world of difference. I don't have to wait in this big line at LAX. <laughs> I feel more welcomed. I feel more at home yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, and I, it's funny too, cause I see, uh, you know, they gave me some notes and things like that and doing some studying. So, you know, you come from Australia and I know, I, I mean, I've got a ton of friends, you know, from Australia, but, uh, so you like skateboarding, right? I know I'm a big skateboarder myself and, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you surf too, just skateboard. I mean, uh, you know, kind of tell me, tell me about this. Cause I just see skateboarding on the thing and I'm like, well, I got to bring this up for sure. Right. <laughs> Man, I, I love I love skateboarding. Um, we just got my stuff out of storage. I moved to I moved into my girlfriend's place. We moved in like a year ago, and I had my stuff in storage for a long time. So my skateboard, you know, we just kind of got it out a couple months ago, and my skateboard's been sitting there staring at me. And I'm really really keen to just take it out and and uh, and go and have a ride. I was never a surfer. My cousins were surfers. Um, it's something on my bucket list. I still like I've. You know, I've got on a surfboard before. I can stand up, but, like, yeah. that's it. You know, most of the time I'm going to fall off. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I want to get more into that because, you know, I love the ocean and I love the culture of surfing. Uh, but, yeah, man, just I, I was a big skateboarder when I was a kid, and I still love doing it when I, when I get time. And uh, I always was sort of more of a, you know, I, I did, I sort of grew in confidence as I was doing it when I was younger. And I ended up doing some big stairs and big stuff like that. But my sort of comfort zone was like flatland. So I sort of, Rodney Mullen was kind of my hero. And I sort of tried to, you know, nice. replicate his stuff. 
Yeah, there's been – yeah, Rodney Mullen Hall. You want to talk about a legend right there. I was just thinking, I mean, I, growing Dude. up, you know, there's so many amazing skateboarders that came out, of, came out of Australia. I mean, you know, you can talk about, you know, the, the Papas, but, uh, you know, obviously Jason Ellis is from Australia. There's, there's so many. I mean, it's a big skate scene there. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, we, we've definitely got a lot to be proud uh, on, the, uh, on the skate front. I think uh, I think Matt Mumford was from my hometown. Really? You know Matt Mumford? Yeah, I know of him. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Rock Rock Rockhampton is uh, where I'm from. Oh yeah, here it is. I'm looking right now. Mumford was born in Brisbane, just like me, and grew up in Rockhampton, just like me. So yeah, he was around. M- Matt Mumford was around uh, around the time of uh, one of my uh, family friends. So my auntie's partner, uh, Sean, he he was growing up with Matt Mumford. And he said that while everyone else was just like, you know, going along and ollieing over decks, ollieing over two or three decks, he was ollieing over the front of cars and stuff. <laughs> oh, man, that's uh, it's insane. Yeah. There's always that one kid that's on a different level than everybody else. Seems like in anything, you know? <laughs> then, uh, yeah, 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 man, I remember him. What's, uh, what, what's, what's the most stairs you ever ollied? Honestly, like four, I think. Uh, I was. I, I enjoy skateboarding. I, it's not that I was ever really, really good at it, but I enjoy skateboarding. I still go to the skate park probably two, three times a month with my daughter. She likes taking her bike there and stuff. So, I mean, I'm not very good. Enough. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm still to the point, too, where if I get hurt, I'm not making money. So I've, I've got it. Now I'm kind of like, well, we can't really do anything kind of crazy, you know. So I just go and skate around and flow around, and I'll go up quarter pipes and down them, but no, no tricks or anything anymore, you know. I just kind of – I just do it to have a good time. I'm just as happy on a longboard now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm i still going to do – when I get back into it, I'm going to do flatland tricks and flip tricks and stuff, but i got to be careful too. You know, if I break a leg, that's swat. I just, you know, sort of in, in trouble there for a second, and I'm in trouble. So i got to do, like, <laughs> safe stuff for sure. Yeah, they're going to have to write a broken leg into the script or something, right? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> So speaking of SWAT, man, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, comes out shortly. But, uh, you know, what else, uh, you know, what else can you tell us about this? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we've got the debut coming shortly. But, uh, you know, how, how many episodes in season one? I mean, what, uh, what are we looking at here? What are the details on SWAT? Right now, we have a guaranteed 13 episodes coming out to everyone. Uh, for everyone to enjoy and we're going to know pretty soon if there's going to be a back nine to make a total of 22 episodes in season one my personal opinion is i think that you know again humbly to the universe i i think that 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 probably will be the case but we definitely have 13 awesome episodes coming um you know we're we're quite ahead of the game right now the the episode we shot before the one we shot now is the one that's going to air around Christmas time, which is so cool. Um, you know, so there were obviously those, those themes in there. Uh, it, it's really exciting, man. I, I've, I've never seen a TV show like the one that we're filming because in a traditional sense, the way that you would traditionally categorize this show, it's a procedural. It has the same A plus B equals C beats that a procedural would have or a crime drama would have in any given episode. But in amongst that, the action is so consistent and so impactful and so A-level that if this was a film, you wouldn't call it a crime drama. You would call it an action movie. That's, that's kind of how, how uh, you know, heavy the, we are on the action. Then additionally to that, whilst we have the pr- procedural, you know, episodic elements of the show, We've also got, you know, the, the, the drama that is building and the conflict that is building and the intricacies of the relationships between the characters is something that feels so grounded and is something unlike anything I've seen on network television. And then finally, one thing that I just absolutely love about it is how authentic it is. Now, there are times where we have to you know, break or bend authenticity in order to fulfill a story element. You know, you have to use poetic license at times. But as much as is humanly possible without breaking the story, we are keeping an authentic show. Uh, we, we have our 
We have our, uh, you know, our technical advisors, uh, Odie Gallup, who, who is a, a SWAT guy, San Diego SWAT. We have uh, a, a, guy, a guy, Jim Lindell, who's uh, SEAL Team 6, who, who we work with. These guys keep us in line, make sure that our stuff is together, make sure that our uh, you know, equipment is, is, is in the right position, make sure that we're not chicken wings with our elbows out, <laughs> make sure that we're taking the room in the correct way. And, and the, the, that element makes me happy because now I know that people who are in SWAT can sit at home in their TV rooms and watch it and say, hey, they actually got it right. And that makes me happy. Yeah, and that's what's funny you bring that up. My uncle, um, and we're talking about the movie that came out in theaters. I mean, it was like a decade ago called SWAT. I can't even remember what, it, what, what year it came out. It was a good movie, but I remember he went to the theater, and he was a SWAT team member for Phoenix Police Department. And he went, and there was a group of officers that went, and they went, and they were really excited when they left because they're like, oh, that was the real deal, you know? And they felt like they could see themselves in those roles. And I'm sure, you know, with the authenticity that you guys are bringing, that's going to have you excited because officers will come up and, and you know, there'll be a connection there, you know, and, and you'll feel like you did right by them because it's, you know, it's not campy. You know, it's the real deal. Yeah, yeah. And already, you know, we're, we're connecting with real officers and, and – and that's what we want to do. We want this to be not just entertainment. We want it to be an opportunity to say thank you to the people that get up every morning and go and do what I couldn't do, you know, what most of us couldn't do, face what most of us couldn't face, in order to keep the rest of society safe, the people that put themselves on the line, that deal with so much, that put themselves in danger, that cop, uh, you know, that, that sort of uh, have to accept um, certain uh, criticisms that have to work ridiculous hours and live off of two hours sleep. Those are the people that we want to thank. And those are the people that we want to, you know, we, we just want to show how amazing they are. And, and this show is, is action packed. And I think that it's accurate. And I think that it shows them to the heroes they are. Well, how has it been for you? Because I'm just looking down, you know, the, the other actors in this, but then in a lot of the movies you've been, I mean, Shamar Moore in this, but, you know, you've got Daniel Radcliffe, and you go, you can go, I can go down your list of movies, and you've had some really top tier talent that you've worked with. I mean, how has that been for your career? You know, just, you know, kind of still being new to, not new to your career, but, you know, still getting established to be able to work with some, some veterans that have been there and done that, and, you know, just some, some amazing, talented humans. It's incredible, man. Anytime I get to work with someone who I can learn something from, it just makes me happy and grateful. And obviously, people like Daniel Radcliffe or whoever it is, you know, they're going to bring uh, not only their skill set and their hard work, but their commercial viability. You know, it's always nice to be cast in something alongside like A-listers or people that are going to help sell the movie or, you know, sort of draw uh, an audience. So that's always great. And then learning from people and working with people and seeing people's different styles and techniques and approaches is always super fun. I did one movie uh, a couple of years ago uh, called, uh, came out last year called Goldstone, which is an Australian outback Western, um, sort of modern day Western. Yeah. And uh, I worked with some of the Australian greats. You know, I worked with uh, a guy named Aaron Pedersen, who's one of our, great actors. I worked with Ivan Sen, who's one of our great directors. I worked with an amazing indigenous cast who are, you know, hugely respected. I, I worked with Jackie Weaver, who I'm not, I don't know if you know her, but she's an amazing actress who put, you know, put her time in and put her years in. And then, you know, whatever it was five years ago, she got nominated for an Oscar. I think she might've won actually, I can't remember for Animal Kingdom and then had a sort of late career takeoff to stardom. Um, David Wenham. I got to work with all of these people. And in this movie, uh, it was me and Aaron Pedersen who were at the helm, kind of, you know, the, the, the two main uh, characters. And to be supported by people who you look up to in a film is just like such a humbling experience, you know. So, uh, yeah, so we've got November 2nd. We've got uh, SWAT hitting, uh, hitting TV. Uh, you know, anything you want to uh, add before we let you go? November 2nd, Thursday night. 10 o'clock, SWAT, watch it, DVR, do whatever you got to do to see it. I am so proud of it. I, I want to shout it from the rooftops. I can't wait to 
find out when and uh, how it's going to uh, sort of premiere in Australia. I still need to get that information, but I know my mum's waiting with anticipation. But watch it. It's a great time for so many different reasons. It's worth it, and it's for everyone. Awesome. Check it out. Well, thank you, Alex. Appreciate the time, and uh, definitely love to catch up sometime in the future. I appreciate yours, man. This is great. Let's do it again sometime. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks. And I told you we're going to keep it short and sweet this week on Jim Beaver's Project Action, and that's just what we're going to do. I'm at SEMA. I'm checking out cars, checking out all the rad things. And you know what? If you're listening to this and it's still SEMA week, make sure and uh, hit me up. If you're in Vegas, if you're at the SEMA show, there's a lot of time to kill at SEMA, right? Um, you know, especially if you're waiting for interviews or, you know, waiting to uh, for meetings or, or whatever you got, right? Hit me up, man. Hit me up at Jim Beaver 15. I'm there. I'd love to meet you guys, listeners of the show, whatever. As always, you can always get a hold of me on social media at Jim Beaver 15, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, downanddirtyshow.com. Use the contact form there and uh, get a hold of me. Um, you know, love fan questions. You can ask them through uh, iTunes right there in the, you know, in the review. Leave a review. Ask a question. They'll get answered here. And if you do leave that review, don't forget, uh, leave your Twitter. Twitter, Instagram, at username, and I'll follow you back when I see it on social media. It may take me a day or two, uh, especially weeks like this where I'm at SEMA, but I do check those weekly, and uh, I will definitely follow you. So hang tight, and uh, I will give you a follow if you leave those reviews. And uh, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, not only to Project Action, but as well as the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And, uh, man, thank you guys uh, once again for tuning in. Thank you, Alex Russell, for, uh, uh, for, the, you know, for uh, coming on the show. Uh, definitely check out SWAT. It's on TV right now if you're listening to this show. So uh, make sure and set your DVRs. Go and check it out. Watch it. It is one of the best shows on television this fall. I can almost promise you that. Just from the trailers, I can tell, right? And I'm a TV guy. So, uh, you know, thank you, Alex Russell. Thank you, Geico. Thank you, True Car. Thank you, listeners to Project Action. Uh, Next week, we got Lillian Garcia. She is going to be my guest here on the podcast. Definitely looking forward to that one. If you got any questions for Lillian Garcia, once again, hit me up on social media or use a contact form on my website at jimbeaver15 or downanddirtyshow.com. I would love your questions for Lillian Garcia. It's going to be one hell of an amazing interview with uh, just an amazing human being. So uh, all that more coming at you next week and uh, throughout the week here on Project Action. Thank you, guys. Be safe. As always, game on.